we're doing two things today. One, this is a giveaway video. I'm giving away up to a total of $200. Five $10 rewards, one $50 reward, and one $100 reward. This is for my channel hitting 15,000 subs. I love all the support, thank you. We're also gonna do some damage tests on how to build magical archers. Are they good enough to enter the giveaway? All you gotta do is make sure that you've hit that sub button, hit the like button on this video, comment down below what you plan on doing if you win, share this to your friends, your teammates, your guildies, whatever. Give them a chance to win too, or just don't share it at all and then you get a better chance to win, you know what I'm saying? Hit that bell dingy ding thing so you know when I post a video. Let's go, baby. Tip of the day. Do you ever wonder why you fail a tree of heroes? Why is Fart Knuckle so difficult sometimes and sometimes he's not? The main reason is that his neutral element and also his fire element have this mechanic but mainly his neutral element when you get to that 40% and under threshold. He has a crit resistance of 80%. And the main problem is that there is only two real monsters that have crit res down. One is Vertiheal, which is a support. Most people have built him, but I'm sure there are some that haven't. And also the new Fire Nine Tail Shiwa also has crit resistance down on her basic attack. If you do not have one or two of these in your raid and don't have good accuracy on them, the last phase of Fart Knuckle will be a little bit longer than normal and then he'll start one-shotting your monsters because his damage goes up over time. If you're failing in Tree of Heroes, I guarantee you this is the reason why. Build one of these two monsters for that last phase and you'll be just fine. The more you know. All right, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be building a water magical archer. Also got enough shards for Fire Nine Tail Fox, so I'm going to do some things with her later. Giggity. I don't know if that was appropriate, but giggity. But we're mainly going to talk about how to build magical archers. With the weak point attack mechanic, I just want to see how to build her. All magical archers have the weak point attack in their skills. What the weak point attack does is it does non-critical damage based off of your monster's precision versus the enemy's evasion. And due to the fact that evasion is kind of a joke late game, it's just like a fifth or sixth stat to actually focus on. A lot of people aren't running evasion, so it's going to be low evasion on the enemy monsters, and if you have high precision, I want to test and see what the damage is like compared to someone that's just like a normal damage dealer. So we're going to test like attack speed, attack, attack in the rune slots, or even just triple attack, flow attack speed. But you want high attack speed for all these magical archers because we're not really testing her for PvE. We can see how much damage she does, but I don't feel like she is a PvE unit. It'll depend on how much damage she does. So we're just testing to see what kind of damage her basic attack does. And it looks like it's like 8,043 damage. Now this build is just straight attack. It's nothing really else at all. Now this is a high attack speed build which has a lot of crit. And with 2,000 less attack. I just want to see what the damage is like on a build like this. So where the basic is about 2,500 less damage, the double shot is going off a lot more. The basic's 5,500, but you're getting it a lot quicker. You're probably getting two to three shots compared to the old build. This is why attack speed is important. As you see, though, this is not critting at all. So these skills cannot crit. Building magical archers and not needing crit for any skills or any basic attack. It reminds me of Naomi and Espino, easy to build monsters. So we have her on about a thousand more attack, a little bit less attack speed. But I feel like this is a little bit better because her damage based off of attack. The higher the attack, the better, but you do need some attack speed. 
So her first skill is three mana cost and does about the same amount of damage as her second skill, which is four mana cost. We're gonna do a two minute timer like in the past starting now. All right, 3.45 million. Like I said, she's not a PVE unit. Her skill damage is 17.5 times three. Her second skill is 52,000. These are with attack buff. Let's compare this to someone like Tassarian. Not a debuff type of damage dealer, but just a straight damage dealer. I just want to see the type of skills he can put out. 35,000, 37,000, 55,000, 92,000. It just depends on what is going on. And these are on like lower stats. This is where crit damage is so valuable. This is 3,600 attack only, but it has 157% crit damage. It's that crit damage that multiplies that damage up. Where with magical archers, you don't get that bonus of crit damage. It's just that constant damage overall. This is with 1,400 more attack. But maybe I'm just building it wrong? Maybe we just need to focus straight on precision and say screw attack. So right now at this build that I have Sharon on, 6,700 of damage with the double shot of 10,000 or 11,000. 5,000 attack, 103% precision. And with weak point damage, weak point is non-critical attack triggered based on the difference. The word is based on the difference between precision and the enemy's evasion. Makes me think that there's a higher multiplier of damage if the precision is a lot more than the evasion. So let's see what we can do to boost the precision as high as possible. Maybe we can make her a PvP unit that doesn't require attack. Can be support tanky with high precision and do damage? Question mark? Alright, so we have 152 precision with a lot lower attack. 2,000 lower attack. Now the basic is doing 5,100 right now. There's no stat that benefits damage on this piece of rune other than precision. So I'm going to remove it. The attack stays the same, and the damage does go down 200, roughly around a 4% damage boost. So attack is definitely the way to go. Just removing 10% precision and adding about 600 attack raises it way more. 25% damage boost. So since we know evasion is not a stat that people prioritize, this is how I would ruin magical archers. The stats in these specific orders. Attack speed, HP, attack, then go into accuracy or precision. You need zero crit rate, you need zero crit damage. So because magical archers are more of a PvP unit, I wouldn't worry about how much damage they do. I feel like they are more like support damage dealers. They aren't nukers. They are made to wear down the enemy or manipulate them. Let's just see what we can do against a way higher team power Orbia with Tessarian. I want to see if the Magical Archer can manipulate Bisco as long as possible with the defense down, the Oblivion. All right, let's see what we can do. We're going to target Orbia here, and Bisco is almost dead. Oh, I got it on, uh, there we go. I got it on, what is it called? I don't even know what I have this on. I have it on... Uh, Auto, there we go. Holy, okay, let's kill this Tassarian now. Let's go. I don't need Oblivion on me though. Please kill the Tassarian. We need that Tassarian to die. There we go. How am I still alive? I have no clue. This is crazy. Stay alive, boy. Come on, come on, stay alive. Where's my heal at? There it is. Let's switch to the archer. Let's kill this Annabelle. Do I get the heal block off? No, but he got Oblivion on. Hey, not too bad. We did all right. I mean, come on, this team against that team. I mean, I don't know. Sharon put out some actual damage. I'm kind of impressed. And this is on a very, very, very crappy build. Like a somewhat tanky build for damage dealers. And this is like super, super weak tanky build for damage dealers, okay? 
Let's try Akina, Juno, Tassari, and Bastet. How about that? Let's switch to the Archer here and take this off of auto. Let's kill Tassarian here. Let's try to kill Tassarian. Let's go. He's got the Oblivion off, so he's not applying Oblivion, which is interesting. Combo. I did talk about her being, you know, the counter to Tassarian, but hey, let's just put it on auto. Why not? Let's just put it on auto. Get the Oblivion on Kina so that she doesn't do any of her passive for her monsters. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's kill the Juno real quick. I think defense down with the Oblivion skill in one skill is actually really strong. And you don't have to worry about crit rate. You just build with high attack and high defensive stats, survivability. I don't know. Pretty good in my opinion so far. Let's see if we can fight Chaotic here. And then we'll go on Tassarian. That's what I feel like we're going to do here. All right, let's go. Come on. We need that defense break. And the Oblivion is on. Perfect. Oh, but the Oblivion got cleansed. We can kill Tassarian real quick if we snipe him now. Come on, die, Tassarian. Thank you. All right, all right. Let's back it up. Back it up a little bit. All right, let's focus Chaotic. Oh, I'm on auto again. So, of course, the auto target doesn't target the target that I'm facing. So, let's go ahead and move out of this. We got to get the debuff on Chaotic, Defense, Break, and Oblivion. Go. Bam. Boom. Bada bang. Why is Sharon attacking the Ariel? Why is Sharon attacking the stupid? There we go. Let's do that. Bam. GG. Just got to get that Oblivion defense break and get to the ultimate and just survive till then, right? I guess that's what we got to do. All right, that's a GG. Juno's dead. I really like uh, Magical Archer, to be honest. I don't know, it's just me. But Oblivion's so good. Defense break and Oblivion. That's it for today's video. Just wanted to showcase Water Magical Archer, how I'm going to build her, showcase her a little bit in PvP. She is by all means not a PvE monster unless you can Oblivion the dungeon. Like the Kamari dungeon in Light or Dark, you can Oblivion that boss. Can be pretty good there. If you like all my videos and content, sub, like, ding, ding, bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.